Top of the afternoon to you boys and girls. We're in the shop for a little bench discussion and today for your viewing pleasure we're going to be taking a look at the three beauties that you see before you. We have a 7910 Dolmar. We have a now extinct 375 XP somewhat of my own creation and we have a 461 down on the right. So as a side note, and uh, we got to kind of get the disclaimers in the beginning, uh, long and tedious, probably if you're not a knuckle slash gearhead again, like myself, you might find it interesting um, and somewhat um, intriguing, maybe even, I don't know, informative as we go along. Um, if you are one of those types, I find it fascinating trying to take something that doesn't run maybe as good as it could and do a little uh, saw shop makeover so to speak and then somehow they seem to miraculously run pretty good from what I've been told so we're going to get a lot of in my humble opinion this whole thing is based on my humble opinion um, we're going to talk about ergonomics um, I need to oh yeah second disclaimer I need to make a note that uh, please excuse me when not if I stammer and or slur my speech through this process my little pea sized brains trying to get a lot of information out and not a whole lot of time so I guess let's begin with ergonomics if we think about um, a chainsaw and concept it's in your hands all day long for the most part you're doing stuff you're killing things which is cool you're limbing and it's just a general interesting process it's actually super physical as well um, guy needs to remember to take care of his body um, you only get one God gave you one body on this planet take care of the one he gives you because when you get older if you don't you will regret that part um, just an FYI um, I prefer the Dolmar in the ergonomics department for two reasons. One of them is the shape of the pistol grip, which I don't know if you can't really you can't really see it. I have to kind of explain it. But if you look at the one on this 461, for example, they're pretty good. They have a pretty decent curve. They're relatively small. Um, any guy with any size hand can get a hold of them well. Um, they're good. There's not, I've never had a complaint about the pistol grip on a still whatsoever. If we look at the Dolmar, it's uh, got a little bit more of a rounded uh, arc shape to it. Fits in your hand a little bit better. It's actually um, more wedge shaped on the sides, catching inside your knuckles and your outside of your fingers right there. And then it's actually rounded at the bottom, so it actually is kind of flat and broad. Hooks around and then swoops around quick in the very bottom fits your hand absolutely perfectly it's the first thing I noticed when I grabbed one the first time I bought a saw from the Dolmar Makita family um, it, they're sweet um, but that's my humble opinion the Husqvarna I think they had a little help from Sasquatch when they were in the design phase of the handlebars because it's they're square and boxy I've never been impressed with the square boxy situation it doesn't help with flickability much in some respects in some respects it does but if you got smaller hands I don't think you're probably going to be liking those too much but that's just my humble opinion if we look at the Handlebars is still, I think, I like these the least. Personally, they have a pretty decent forward cant, a little bit of a relaxed position for your wrist, especially compared to like the 660s, which are almost straight. But I don't like this situation here at all. It's cocked too far back, and it swoops around too quick. The leverage when you're running a long bar, your handlebars... Um, and your pistol grip are a lot closer than either other two saws and if you run a long bar on these saws which out on the west coast that's pretty normal like a three footer fairly regularly um, it's the leverage is haywire and you have a little bit more trouble controlling the tip in my humble opinion if we look at the handlebars for the Husqvarna pretty good forward cant so your wrist is nice and relaxed it's a little bit more cocked out toward the front on this side, this radius is a little too tight in my humble opinion. I wish it was a little more relaxed. Um, but the distance is a little further from the pistol grip to the handlebar, so you get a little bit more leverage. Um, that's just my humble opinion. So they're not too bad. If we look at the Dolmars, the, the forward cant's pretty mondo, actually. It's pretty sweet. Your wrists are nice and relaxed. And the angle is really sweet right here. Use this 
side a lot if you're limbing, especially if you're limbing the other side, which would be the right side for a guy. Um, but what's really sweet on these is this situation here, in my humble opinion. Nice, gradual sweep. Um, the distance from your pistol grip to the handlebar is the furthest by several inches, especially on a still. A lot of leverage if you want to get, I mean, I've run a 42 on mine just for kicks a few times, and uh, you can actually maneuver that tip around well with these handlebars. The only bad thing is this is a, not a good idea, or it's not helpful with chip management. It's kind of a problem, with, especially if you're in a brushy area. Um, that's the downfall, but as far as feel, they're the best. That's my humble opinion, of course. The Dolmar is really good. Um, if you want to use it inland where it's not too brushing, we'll discuss that later. If we want to talk about airflow a little bit, um, the Dolmar is kind of an anomaly. Every Most people have been around the Husqvarna and the still for the most part. Um, interesting, this is the heavy duty air filter system. This is cartridge style, kind of a velocity stack in concept and design. Really super lightweight, carb box cover, air horn, bellows. Um, this is the spring mount that actually holds it. I've only broke one so far. I've used them a lot. Had at least six of them so far. Um, really interesting. There's a relief in the bellows. Um, there's some volume in there. It's going to let the pressure that's coming back on the downstroke of the piston kind of dissipate right there and not blast clear up into the cartridge style air cleaner. You do have to mod these though um, to keep them together for a long period of time and a uh, pre-cleaner. So pretty well thought out design. I don't think I mentioned that the Dolmar is kind of a thoroughbred concept. They're lightweight everywhere. They could shave weight they did. Um, as a result, the still and, uh, or excuse me, the Husqvarna and the Dolmar weigh about the same. The still is about a half of a pound heavier. They come in a little over 14. This one comes in a little over 14 and a half, I guess. So it's about a half pound more weight wise. Um, displacement's way different in these saws. If you think about it, it's almost four cc's difference between the small one, which would be the XPW Husqvarna. It comes in at um, 74.70 cc's. If you carry it out to two places, the Dolmar comes in at um, 78.5. Eight almost six tenths, and uh, still comes in at 76.45. I think it is if you do the math. Like I said, carry it to second decimal place. Um, 36 millimeter stroke, 36 millimeter stroke, 37 millimeter stroke, 52 millimeter bore, 51.4 millimeter bore, and 52 millimeter bore. So the sooner up the um, XPW's actually is from a 375K, which was a cutoff saw that had a green ignition, wasn't winding up any more than 8500 to keep the um, speed of the stones that they would use. Uh, it's a construction saw basically for construction workers, keeping that speed down so they have different transfer ports than a standard XP, but the much bigger bore. I was putting those cylinders once I found out they fit on those cases. Um, Oh, two years at least before you could buy a XPW made up from the factory. Probably in 04, I started doing that myself. And there was a few other guys that were doing that as well um, once I figured that out. So it's pretty sweet. Just kind of segued off on that for a second. Um, if we look at the air cleaner in the Husqvarna, flocked, paper style, this will separate at times. You can epoxy that and just set it on there and glue it back together and it won't miss a beat. Even if it does fall apart, you won't ever pass any air, but pretty open for a lot of airflow, which is sweet. Kind of a velocity stack design in a way. It's a lot of areas coming down tight. Um, uh, pretty bulletproof. They've been in existence for a long time. The still's got the standard shape that's been around since the 064, at least that I first saw. Um, when they were doing that filter um, years ago, 30 years ago, whatever. Uh, they do have a paper style cartridge element now, but the same basic shape. A lot of guys transition into the whole shot. Well, I call it the whole shot. Some people call it the max flow system. A little bit better using uh, oil to actually catch the particulates. But anyway, if we look um, at the carburetors themselves, we'll notice that the uh, Dolmar and the 
Husqvarna relatively similar, has a fixed high-speed jet. This is actually an early, early 6B size since um, you couldn't even actually get these particular carburetors on that saw. You got the uh, little bit later one, which had the stops on them, but um, we were able to fit it, so what the heck. Um, standard issue, this shape's been around for eons. Again, back to that 064 saw, the first time I ever saw any of those. Um, 17 millimeter Ventur Venturis. Um, this one's the, probably the biggest on the still, 17.4, I think it was. The Husky came in a little smaller. It was a 16.9, I think it was, and the Dolmar was kind of right in the middle, about 17.2, I think it was. So they're all relatively close. The transition from the biggest part of the opening down to the Venturi is the best in the in the Zama Dolmar carburetor. It's like smoothest silk transition. Worst in the still actually has a dip in there. Um, Probably in the middle then would be the Husqvarna. It's pretty decent transition, not as good as the one on the Dolmar. If we look at the intake manifolds, we'll notice how the Dolmar and the Husqvarna are relatively close to the same, the way they do their process. I mean, almost like a carbon copy. Uh, big open holes in them, though, for good flow, which is really sweet, super smooth in there. The still, however, is a little bit different. Um, my lighting in my shop isn't super awesome, unfortunately. I'm hoping that you can see down in here. Um, there's a pretty rough patch in there. There's little points that stick up. Um, I think they're trying to atomize the flow. I think, in my humble opinion, I always thought the atomization process was happening when the piston is trying to uh, compress the charge. and the charge is um, starting to move essentially as it's getting compressed into the combustion chamber and that's when your atomization process is happening. I don't know if they're trying to do atomization to help with the bearings with that, but I've never seen this in a race application and I'm thinking that you're impeding the flow rather than enhancing it with that system, but that's just my humble opinion again. If we look at the cylinders, first thing we'll notice is the Dolmar cylinder is really small and compact. We'll talk about why in a little bit, um, considering it's almost an 80cc saw. Um, pretty normal looking for that, except we look at the exhaust, we see there's a step in there. Um, we'll look at the muffler and we'll note why that is. Pretty interesting, but really small um, port. That's a really small exhaust port, and it kind of goes with the a skirt on the piston, we'll look at that in a minute, but really small intake. So you got good flow, good flow, good flow, and then right there you have like kind of a Mondo restriction, which isn't helping the process. It's pretty small transfer ports, really, for the biggest saw that it is. Um, they're actually a little bit smaller than what's on the Husqvarna, in my humble opinion. If we look down in there, we see the quad loop situation. We also notice that the one in the back is a little bigger than the one in the front, which coincides with the location of the combustion chamber. Combustion chamber, and this is the smallest of any of the three by far. Um, these saws regularly come out of the box at 185 pounds of compression, whereas the 372 XPW, um, if we talk about combustion chambers, it's Mondo in comparison, and they come out of the box about 150 normally. Um, the stills come in at about 165, depending on the residual mix oil that's going on in there from when they got run at the factory. But if we start looking at the ports, we see a big intake port on 372. Really big, really big exhaust port, which is nice. So the flow is good. There's basically in concept a wind happening um, because it's uh, 13,000 RPMs. There's so much um, speed with the piston. There's, it's pulling so much air in there. It actually acts like a wind in concept as it rolls in and rolls through. Um, the openness of the port size helps with that wind, essentially. So um, we didn't look at the quad loop system, a little bit smaller than a standard XP. Like I said, these came off of the K saws, which weren't designed to run at high RPMs. A um, little bit of a step right there, kind of a lot of work to get these to flow a lot of air, but it's possible, which is sweet. Now, if we look at the still, we see that there's the transfer ports right there. That's all that they get. That's exactly what it looks like out of the box. Pretty puny. Um, if you think about it, if somebody can get this thing to flow good, then that guy's probably 
got something going on. But if we look down in at the transfer ports, we see that um, their quad loop style, um, and but they're funky shaped. They're actually like tilted up as they go back, and that has to do with the emission system. or trying to like keep the um, unburned charge from getting out the exhaust so much. That's part of their process, and that's they design them so they actually shape like that, which is interesting. Um, exhaust standard issue still that style's been around for eons. So if we transition over to the pistons for a second. First thing we'll notice is it's got one ring, less parasitic drag than either of the Husky or the Still version. It's thin as well. Usually when one ring is present, they're up around 60, 70 thousandths. Um, this one comes in at 47. It's the same thickness as one ring on the other two. So the parasitic drags down, but it's got the little tiny skirt. Ring pins off to the side, so you don't have such an issue with the wear of the ring end gap on the back of the cylinder wall, because that's where the thrust surface is. Super lightweight piston, though. If we look at an older version, 7900, you can see how it works well with the transfer port design, but my personal preference is this piston, even though it's a little bit heavier, you're going to get um, more flow happening from underneath the dome, and you're going to get probably a little bit better cooling effects, since in concept the piston does two things, at least. Um, transfers the combustion process to the rod and it actually acts as a, like a heat sink so there's a couple things happening with the piston um, preference for flow uh, definitely more lightweight short deck height um, uh, I prefer this one even though this one's lighter because um, I think you can get the flow better in this one um, you can't get much flow coming this way into the transfer ports um, so that's just my humble opinion again. If we look at the Husqvarna, um, pretty much has a big skirt on it, kind of motorcycle-esque, but it has these cool little flat spots cast into it right here, which start pushing on the charge right away in addition to what's going on up here. So that's helping to pressurize the crankcase. We'll be looking at those later. Um, still two ring design. This has only been run at the factory. Um, it's kind of interesting the residual stain issue we have going on here. Speaking of residual stain, we got kind of a wear issue happening right here, and we are checking with our highly sensitive and calibrated instrument right here. My fingernail, verify that we're not seeing something. Silky smooth. Comes in at 3.1 tolerance. Um, way high, in my humble opinion. The XPW came in at 1.9 and the Dolmar came in at 1.95. That's normal for either years and years and years. 2.0 has been kind of the number. 2.5 was getting on the end of a life cycle, looking for a bigger piston. If it was made, um, that would be the ABC number system. Um, 3.0, if you couldn't come up with a bigger piston and you're at 3.0, you're round filing the whole process because what happens is the piston gets cocked in there a little bit and I think that's what's happening with the wear as it runs across the back of the, or well, the intake part of the, flow, the inflow system. Um, we have a little bit of centripetal force happening as well. The rod comes up and it's actually going this way. Is that helping to get it cockeyed? Uh, interesting thought process. Um, one of the things that I thought was really sweet about the Dolmar was the air guide. It's definitely the sweetest thing I've seen in a long time. Um, directs the flow right over the top of the cylinder, doesn't allow it to just go up there and dissipate wherever it wants, pretty much directing it till it gets right on the cylinder. That's how they can get away with the little tiny um, size cylinder head in those, which is really sweet. If you think about that in concept and we look at the crankcase itself we see that uh, whoops we see that there's a pretty small volume right below the transfer ports which means the pressurization is going to start happening really quick to push the charge up through and your pumping ratio is good because there isn't a whole lot of volume there um, a full circle crank would take up that extra volume which most uh, motorcycles run that um, speed chainsaws do Interesting. Um, pretty long rod, so the dwell time's good. The crank is small, though. 
if you see the top of this, uh, two holes for lubrication, which is sweet, um, but it's small. The rod itself is just a small rod. The rod journal is pretty small. The throws are small. It's a pretty lightweight crank, actually. Segway off, uh, metal flywheel. I prefer that myself because once you get them spinning up, um, they kind of have tractor power, and I like tractor power. So one of the things that we didn't talk about because it fell on the floor was the clutch cover in my humble opinion uh, it's lightweight and small but it's too close to the cases by a long shot you don't want to be on the coast cutting in a brush patch with a bunch of little hairy spruce especially uh, you'll be tearing what little bit of hair you have left out um, chip management not too good it's like the worst I've seen actually the spring mounts are a little bit weak if you're not a finesse kind of guy you might be tearing those up a lot especially if you're running a long bar and trying to horse it around um, if we look at the 372, we see that metal flywheel, which I prefer, but the guide system stops right here, so the air is just allowed to go wherever it wants, but then you see we have huge fins on that thing, so it kind of offsets that. Motorcycle style cases to a degree, motorcycle-esque, if you will. A um, lot of volume right below, but we do have the bottom, that piston push-in right coming down on top of that trying to stuff it around into the transfer ports which is nice uh, a lot of mass to the rod you can see it's a lot bigger situation going on on the rod bearing you can see that the throws are bigger everything about the cranks just a little bit beefier um, they're pretty bulletproof probably the weak link in the 372 would be the small drive side bearing it's a 6202 instead of a 6203 which these two are fitted with they both have the small bearing on the flywheel side, which is pretty normal. Like I said, the weak link in that saw for me, what I've noticed over the years is the drive side bearing. If you have a failure, that's generally it. The interesting part of this whole equation would be the still. If we talk about the air for a second, though, you can see the guide right there, just allowing it to go kind of wherever it wants, and you can see the cylinder pretty big fin area surface area which is necessary um, cool little thing here a uh, little piece of cast aluminum the piston actually um, the skirt goes on the back side of it in that slot right there and then the rod goes on the front side of it so what's happening is as it's going down it's trying to charge the front half of the case is essentially by taking up volume underneath the piston it's trying to get it directed out toward the front which is where the transfer ports are and we looked at those uh, just a little while ago so we won't talk too much about the clutch cover on the stills they're definitely the best on the market if we talk about the Husqvarna it's kind of in the middle this one's fitted with the big kid style came off of a 390 um, they bolt right on since the um, bar nuts are the same kind of um, bolt pattern and spacing. I prefer that style. It's a little heavier duty dust flap, bigger guide in the front. We didn't talk too much. I don't remember if we talked about... I don't think we talked about these. So here we have the wrist pin bearings. We have the steel and we have the Husqvarna, which are a carbon copy of each other, essentially. They're interchangeable, size and shape, all 12 millimeter pins. Um, I think they're 58 or 60 thousandths for the needle bearings thickness wise if you want to see a comparison a lot more narrow um, a lot more husky it's like a 660 style just a mini version uh, bigger needle bearings they're about 78 or 80 thousandths in diameter but like I said they built that saw for light weight and it comes in about the same as a 372 and it has about 80 cc so we kind of did a lot of information. Have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth.